Hey everyone, and welcome to Boston Auto Blog. As I work my way through the BMW lineup, I once again reunite with the BMW X2. If you guys were with me back in 2018, I first checked out this vehicle when they first arrived in showrooms. However, I didn't get a test drive it, but this time, and in this review, I most certainly will. While I could have filmed an X7 or an X1 today, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to feature a Mazano Blue X2. And I want to thank my friend Mazano X2 on Instagram for inspiring me to once again review this vehicle. Now, we became friends after he parked his X2 next to my Cornflower Blue GTI at numerous cars and coffees. Now, when you look at them closely, the shade of blue is very similar. So our friendship is based on the color of our cars. But I was always surprised by his pride and really how much he enjoyed driving and owning this vehicle. So in this video, we're gonna check out why the X2 might be the perfect crossover to drive on a daily basis and why it might be the perfect vehicle for you. Now, before I get in this review, I'd like to thank Herb Chambers BMW Sudbury in Sudbury, Massachusetts for allowing me to do this review. Their link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive BMW inventory. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. As Americans' interest in cars continues to decline, manufacturers have struggled to find a happy medium, where they can offer an extensive lineup that appeals to a large majority of consumers, while also not losing brand loyalists and enthusiasts. While BMW and their German rivals continue to produce sports sedans, as they've done throughout their history, they can't forget the growing demand in more practical vehicles that balances both year-round versatility and performance. Station wagons are most certainly not the answer, and unlike in Europe, where hot hatches are a dime a dozen, Americans continue to prefer anything labeled a crossover rather than all the other alternatives on the market. So BMW's strategy to ease this transition was the X2 back in 2018. And this little subcompact crossover that's often referred to as a sports activity vehicle is the compromise between being pragmatic and engaging to drive. Starting off with pricing, the X2 M35i comes in with a base price of just over $46,000, with the model we have today being well equipped at $54,000. Compared to crosstown rivals Audi and Mercedes-Benz, the X2 sits between both in terms of cost, as Audi does not offer a direct competitor in this segment here in the US. And for Mercedes-Benz, the GLA 35 AMG, which will match up perfectly in a comparison, hasn't arrived at showrooms yet. If you were to park all three together, the X2 sits the lowest at 7.2 inches of ground clearance, which is about an inch higher than the 2 Series Grand Coupe. While seating position will be affected, the X2 is the closest you feel to being in a car compared to the Q3 and GLA. Up front, if you didn't know any better, you'd probably consider the X2 M35i to be a hatchback, as there's no indication of this vehicle being a crossover, thanks to the lack of plastic cladding. BMW's goal was to offer a sportier version of the X1, and they achieved that with a very aggressive front fascia, especially for the lower portion of the front bumper. Standard are LED headlights, cornering lights, and fog lights 
for improved illumination at night. And overall, the minor details that make up this crossover really helps differentiate it from the more civilianized X1. Moving over to the side profile, the X2 we have today is sitting on 20 inch M double spoke wheels wrapped in run flat tires. Obviously with this being an M35i, we also have the M Sport brakes with blue brake calipers. Distinguishing the M35i from the 28i is the deletion of plastic cladding around the wheel arches, giving this crossover a lifted hatchback look while also having a much more sporty road presence. With this X2 being designated with an M badge, you'll also have satin silver side mirror caps, providing a nice color contrast on this vehicle. Coming around to the back, once again, we are met with hatchback-like design qualities, particularly when it comes to the C-pillar, as opposed to the traditional subcompact crossover look you'd have with the X1. Just like up front, LED taillights do come standard for an upscale and modern road presence. Similar to the X1, there will be dual exhaust outlets, but the rear diffuser and the lower portion of the rear bumper are painted with dark gloss gray accents, minimizing any semblance to an off-road capable crossover, and instead going with a sleek and performance oriented appearance. Under the hood, the X2 M35i is powered by a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder engine that puts out 301 horsepower and 331 pound-feet of torque, and is paired with an 8-speed automatic transmission. This crossover is deceptively quick, with a 0-60 time of around 4.7 seconds, which is almost as fast as the X3 M40i. Standard is BMW's X-Drive all-wheel drive system, giving the X2 M35i year-round versatility, while also being a fun daily driver for consumers who live in the colder regions of the country. For fuel economy, you can expect to receive right around 23 miles per gallon in the city and 30 miles per gallon on the highway. So unlike all my other BMW reviews I have done so far on this channel, this one's a bit of an intrigue and also curiosity because if you've been with me for a long time, I did do a walk around video of the X2 when it first hit showrooms, I believe in the spring, early spring of 2018. And you know, I thought, okay, it's gonna be a sportier version of the X1, and this is a great way to get into more of a sporty feeling crossover at around forty to fifty thousand dollars. But I never looked at it as being like an enthusiast vehicle until last year when somebody at Cars and Coffee showed up in a Mazano Blue X2, basically the exact same spec as the one we're in right now, M35i. And I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, how is this an enthusiast car? And then I get to talk to the owner and he's really excited about this vehicle. Like there's a lot of pride and ownership of driving this crossover. And I'm thinking, all right, there has to be something to this. I need to experience driving this crossover. And here I am today and I'm looking forward to seeing how this vehicle drives and handles. Because when I started looking at the specs and you have a zero to 60 time of around 4.7 seconds, I begin to realize, or I began to realize when I was cruising with him that he'd actually take me in a zero to 60 acceleration. And I understand that, and some of you guys have been commenting in my last few BMW videos, that it has nothing to do with acceleration, stop worrying about acceleration when it comes to crossovers, but I think crossovers are really making their way into the car community and car culture, and that's why I do bring that up. So he's literally like a full second ahead, a full second faster than I am, and now I wanna know how does this vehicle handle, how does it drive, is it engaging to drive more importantly? Now earlier this year, I featured the new two series Grand Coupe, which is built on the exact same platform as the X2. Now we do not get a ZF eight speed automatic transmission, but the ISN eight speed automatic transmission responds quite well, especially if you go hard on an acceleration. But what I'm noticing immediately though, is that braking is very responsive. And that's what I love about the M vehicles in the BMW lineups is that uh, the braking power is pretty strong. You don't really need to mash on the brakes, uh, just a simple tap and the vehicle will stop. So that's one thing I noticed too. Now BMW refers to all of their crossovers as sports activity vehicles. And I have to say, when you park an X2 next to say a Volkswagen GTI, it's not much larger. I mean, we can call this a crossover because that's what it is, but it's just a little bit bigger than a hatchback. It's a little bit bigger than a car. 
And driving it, it does feel very similar to the 2 Series Grand Coupe that I drove a few months ago. It has a nice sound to it. It's quick, has a nice pickup and turning radius. I, I love the cornering of these vehicles. Again, that's one thing I love about uh, BMW's M vehicles is that their cornering is nice and sharp, steering is tight, and once again, that goes along with the braking, that goes along with the acceleration. So all together, when you combine them together, it's a great driving vehicle. Also, I have the M Sport seats in this one, and nice bolstering, very nice bolstering, keeps you in place and definitely add to that sports car feel, which I think this is one of the reasons why people are going to even these smaller crossovers and why a lot of brands are starting to really inject a lot of performance under the hood of these vehicles to give people that great driving experience that really they can still get in a car, but with extra practicality, thanks to this being a crossover. Now the segment that the X2 finds itself in actually has a very long list of competitors, uh, even outside the German brand. So the X2 goes up against the Audi Q3 and the Mercedes-Benz GLA, and then also the Acura RDX, which does seem a bit big to me in this segment. I don't know why journalists continue to put that up against the X2. And then also the Volvo XC40. But in my mind, if you're looking at an Acura RDX and a Volvo XC40, and actually seriously looking at them, you're a very unique consumer because most people in this segment or most people who are looking at buying German are going to really go up against the big three. They're going to pair, compare the BMW, Mercedes-Benz, and Audi. Now, the X2 goes up against the Q3, and the Q3 does not have an SQ3 or an S badge, so you don't have the performance with them at that price range. So around forty dollars to $50,000, you don't get any performance from them. And then Mercedes-Benz currently, I mean, we can technically say that for 2021, they have the new GLA 35 AMG, which is right around the same price range as uh, the X2 M35i, but currently they're only at the 45 AMG, and that starts about, I think, five to $6,000 more expensive than the X2 M3, M35i, and I think BMW finds a great balance of being between both and giving you performance at an affordable price range while also being practical as well. So let's talk about fuel economy numbers for a minute. So in the city, you get right around 23 miles per gallon, and on the highway, 30 miles per gallon, which is rather impressive because when you take into consideration that this vehicle has right around 300 horsepower, zero to six time around 4.7 seconds, you know, it's very all around practical because you have the cargo room of a crossover, you have the performance of a sports car, but you have the fuel economy numbers of just an average consumer vehicle. So I think overall it's a great buying decision because it fits a lot of different molds and I can see why a car enthusiast would want this vehicle as maybe their daily or maybe even as their fun vehicle uh, from Monday through Sunday. So I'd also made the case that the X2 is kind of the dinosaur in the lineup which is insane for me to say because it came out in 2018 but the 2 Series Grand Coupe that's based on this vehicle has a full diesel display for the gauges for the gauge cluster whereas the x2 doesn't i kind of like that though it's definitely old school it definitely gives you that uh, more traditional feel and layout but i am interested in seeing what bmw does to the x2 in the future hopefully in the near future because i would like to see a digital display but um, i do like seeing analog gauges it still has that old feel to me i like it um, but you still get a nice touch of technology as well with the infotainment system and you still have a similar layout to most bmws in the current lineup This thing takes off. It does take off. I mean, we're not, I'm not talking like the same push as the uh, XGM 40i, but this thing is very quick. And in fact, even though this isn't a ZF8 speed, the shifts were almost instant. So in closing, after this test drive, I fully understand where my friend is coming from with his love for the X2 because it provides a great driving experience you get a really good acceleration, you get the practicality, and I think as car enthusiasts we get caught in, are caught up in two-door coupes, having the you know M3, M2, M4, and we completely overlook these vehicles. And I think to some degree it is a sleeper. Now, I love the spec of Mazano Blue. I, I think it's a great spec. The only spec I would go with personally, because I'm a big fan of blue cars. Uh, but I just think that overall this is 
one of the perfect, most perfect vehicles you can have. I think it's because it's a crossover, it's a step up from a hatchback. But if I could, could compare this to, say, the vehicle that I own, which is a Volkswagen GTI, maybe closer maybe to a Golf R, uh, this is a great alternative to that if you don't want to go with Volkswagen. But also, if you're just looking for extra practicality and you're looking some, for some fun, then the X2 is most certainly a great option to go with. Inside, you're greeted by the optional power adjustable heated Dakota leather M Sport seats for both the driver and passenger, which provide a good amount of bolstering and keep you in place during a spirited drive. Not found in many new cars these days are traditional analog gauges with only a small digital readout of the outside temperature and digital speedometer. Unlike most vehicles in the BMW lineup, you won't have the ability to upgrade to a full digital display inside the X2, leaving drivers with one last connection to BMWs of the past. New for 2020 is a standard 8.8 inch touchscreen, which wasn't available on previous model years for the X2. However, this iDrive system is not what you'll find in the 2 Series Grand Coupe, 3 Series, or any crossover with the X3 badge or above, so you won't have the same functionality or features that those vehicles offer. However, we do have Apple CarPlay, onboard navigation, and the upgraded Harman Kardon Premium Sound System. As we've seen throughout the BMW lineup, you will have a rotary dial and quick access buttons found in the center console to quickly and effortlessly get you to different menus and screens. I personally prefer using the dial rather than the touchscreen, as it tends to help keep my eyes on the road. So from a driver's safety aspect, it's certainly better than the alternative. You will get a rear backup camera with trajectory to go along with front and rear parking sensors. As you work our way down towards the center console, you'll find two rows of buttons, with the top being your radio presets and volume knob, while the bottom will be for your dual zone climate control and three level heated seats. Of course, you will have a USB input to connect your iPhone to the X2. And for the center console itself, you'll have the drive mode selector, which for me will always be in sport, the button for your park assist features, and hill descent control for when you encounter snow or icy road conditions. For the center storage compartment, you'll have enough room for a smartphone or small items. And rounding out the front seating area, this X2 M35i is equipped with the optional panoramic moonroof, which lets in a lot of natural light and helps give the perception that the interior is more spacious. Now for passengers in the back, we're going to start off with the driver's side. Now this seat is adjusted to someone of my height, around 5'5". And I have a surprising amount of room here. I was not expecting to have this amount of legroom to work with in a smaller crossover, but here I am with visibly a few inches, more than a few inches of legroom. So for me, I think this definitely works at a height around 5'5". Five, five. I think somewhere around maybe 5'7 or 5'8 could be comfortable back here for sure. Now, headroom, of course, is going to be a bit of an issue. I think people around maybe six foot tall and above back here might be a bit cramped. Now, I think that's where the X3 comes in. The X3 is a little more boxier and has a higher roof line where this is really more of a sporty, uh, maybe hatchback alternative. So definitely keep that in mind, especially if you have any taller passengers that are gonna be back here most of the time. Now, for the center seat, a vehicle of this size, you don't really expect to have a third person back here all the time. It's just not practical. However, there's some decent placements for my feet. And I think for smaller kids, you could most certainly fit a third kid back here. But when it comes to average size adults, that's where I think the X2 is limited to just two people back here. Even though there's some good placements for my feet, I just don't think that you could fit a third person back here practically on a daily basis, especially someone even at 5'5". Five five. So uh, considering the X2 segment, you don't really expect to fit uh, a third person back here. And I think with the X2, if you could fit a third kid back here, uh, that's definitely a win. So definitely keep that in mind. I think the X3 is a better option to go with if you do have three people back here on a daily basis. And then on the passenger side, I adjust the seat a little bit further back, not all the way back, and I still have some room to work with. So I think overall, if people are on maybe five, seven, five, eight, this vehicle is great to have four people in the vehicle. I think there's enough room for that. Uh, when you start squeezing in a fifth person, that's where it gets kind of iffy. Um, but I do think on short drives, you could most certainly fit a third person back here. But also I think when it comes to interior space, particularly legroom, uh, this is rather impressive for a vehicle of its size. 
Also back here, we do get two rear air vents along with two USB inputs. And rounding out the rear seating area, we do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now for rear cargo space, you can expect to receive right around 21.6 cubic feet of rear cargo. And that's with the rear seats folded up. With the rear seats folded down, that space more than doubles in size to 50 cubic feet. So this vehicle is very practical, but also when it comes to dimensions, it's very hatchback-like. I like to think of the X2 as being a lifted hatchback rather than a crossover. Now you do get a nice secretive compartment underneath the floor where you can fit smaller items and maybe even valuable items that you don't want anyone to see or steal. Also, it's great for if you have any kids and uh, there's items you don't want them getting access to, you're going to put them back down there and they'll never know that those items are inside the X2. You also have a cargo net on the side for smaller items such as detailing equipment and also water bottles that might get thrown around during your travels with the X2. Now, just like every hatchback, most crossovers and station wagons, you do get a cargo cover for that extra peace of mind when you do leave your X2 unattended and you have valuable items such as camera gear, like for myself when I'm out doing reviews. Um, if I leave the vehicle unattended, I know that they're gonna be out of sight so people won't peek in and steal them. And then once you're done, just press the button and the lift gate will close automatically. So at the end of the day, all my questions were answered about the X2 M35i. Is it fun to drive? Absolutely. Steering is very responsive and really reminds me of all the other BMW vehicles with the M badge I've reviewed so far on this channel. Now, when it comes to braking, braking surprised me because I wasn't expecting to not go too deep into braking and have this vehicle stop almost instantly. Also, when it comes to acceleration times, 0 to 60, right around 4.7 seconds. And then even when accelerating, even though this isn't a ZF HV automatic transmission, gear shifts were almost instant. Also, is this vehicle very practical and dailyable? Of course it is. It's very similar to being a hatchback. I'm still sticking with the idea of the X2 being a lifted hatchback rather than being a crossover because the X3 really is a true crossover. Whereas the X2 with its lower roof line and really kind of car-like design to it, the X2 to me is the closest thing you can get to a hatchback in the BMW lineup here in the United States. So if you don't want to go the crossover direction, then the X2 is perfect. But it definitely provides that fun factor, that engaging driving experience that you're looking for, but doesn't have that same crossover-like design that maybe some of you guys don't want to go with. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys next time.